Hey, it's good to go down the road with you, ladies and gentlemen. We uh, we got a big day planned. Nick Archuleta is going to join us in a little bit. He's the president of ND United. You're saying, okay, who's that? Well, here's who they are. They're the North Dakota public employees. So if you think of that man or woman in that snowplow or in that classroom or in public health, that's who we're talking about. We'll visit with Nick about how the legislative session is going for them. Going to have some comments for you a little bit later about COVID, about vaccine. But first, I'm joined by a man that uh, I served with. We didn't vote the same way most of the time, but you know what? Uh, I always respect it. Uh, because he told you what was going to happen and and he told you what you could do and what you couldn't do and he was the majority leader so he had a little more power than what I did and so I, I found a way to get bills passed by talking to him that's the right way to put it Al Carlson how you doing you know what a good idea shouldn't go to waste <laughs> yeah. I remember somebody asked me on the Democratic side of the aisle one time they said how come your bills pass you know what is it about your I said I walk over and I talk to him <laughs> and they tell me, all right, this one's a waste of our time. And I may still put it in anyway, just because I want to make a point, but I know it's not going to pass. And I, I'm not sure a lot of people always did that, Al. I'm not. No, if, if you don't even attempt yeah. to have some unity there or some agreement, it's never going to go anywhere. Yeah. That's just the process. So I uh, want to talk a little bit about what this legislative session has going on. Uh, because so far they've been focused on some issues that they shouldn't have to be focused on. So I haven't had you on TV since the Luke Simons uh, issue. If you were Chet Pollard, who he, he holds your old position there, if you were him, how would have you handled it? I would have handled it basically the same way. I'd have made sure I had all my facts together. Before I ever went to the floor, I'd have gathered everything from counsel, from the highway patrol, from whoever else had, had lodged some type of complaints. And I'd have made sure that it was the caucus was aware. I'd have gotten it in their hands so they could see it. And, uh, and I would have taken it to the floor just like Chet did. And what he did was, was it was a long day. It was not a proud day for the legislature. I mean, I, in all the years I was there, we never expelled a member. It's no fun to have to do that. But you know what? You're expected to be held at a higher standard when you're in the legislature. And that standard doesn't include harassing people. It calls sexual comments to people. It doesn't uh, be an accusatory of people not working when doing exactly what you want. Um, and with those things in mind, there's always been people that are abrasive. But it was a different level of abrasive. And, and I, uh, I feel bad the legislature went through it. But in the end, they, uh, they expelled them. They got their two-thirds vote. By the way, you were right on that number. I hate to admit that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often. I'm yeah, you, especially on math, you know. Come on. 67. But anyway, they, did, they had the votes, and they did it. And uh, they now have re named a replacement, a lady rancher from Richardson area. Don't know much about her, but, but I think she had the support of, uh, of Rep or, uh, Congressman Armstrong and of uh, Senator Hel Elkin from that district. So um, hopefully they'll, they'll, that'll mend out there in that district and they'll get on with the business of the state. Well, you know, Chet Pollard said something on my radio show that stuck in my head. He said, we, we feel we're doing a lot of good work here. And we don't want this to be the story of the legislative session. So I got to ask you, do you think it's going to be the story of the legislative session when they go sign and die? You know, I don't think, uh, I think it will be. Unfortunately, it will be. I think it'll be a signature event. And if they, uh, if they do a summary at the end, I, I guarantee you that'll be at the top of the list. You know, balancing the budget with reduced revenue won't even take the spotlight. You know, the bonding bill, which is probably going to be close to seven, eight hundred million dollars. Um, for infrastructure issues, basically, a lot of it for the Valley, will hardly make news. And that's a big deal. I mean, that they're basically kicking in a bunch of cash for the diversion. And, and how much have you heard about on the news? And the answer is not very much. So it, that'll be the story. Uh, the key is that they, uh, you know, some days when you look at the legislature, you almost want to use the old saying, do no harm. <laughs> and, and hopefully that's what they did, is they didn't overburden with regulation, they created opportunities for our citizens. And if they did that, then you can walk away saying it was a pretty good session. So what do you think about yearly sessions? You know, I was never in favor of them. Um, I just, when you have a citizen legislature that's paid very little, you know, at the most they can make when they're there for a session is $30,000 for that year. And in the off year, they're probably going to make 4500 to $5,000 uh, for the interim committee meetings and stuff. So nobody does it for the money. But 
right now we have trouble recruiting candidates. If they had an obligation for four months for every year or for what would be two and a half months, whatever would happen to be one, like Minnesota, one's a, a session year on, on laws, one's on budget. You know, if we did that, I think we'd have a harder time recruiting candidates to go out there and do the people's work. So you you would be voting no? I'd be voting no. There, right? I never have supported it. It's been yeah. there. I don't know how many times you voted on it, but it was there almost I've, every time that I was there. I voted no every time, and mm. I think it, it was uh, Raleigh Redland used to put it in every year in the Senate side, yep. and it never made it over to you on the House Raleigh side. Raleigh must not have had much to do. He must have been. Uh, he <laughs> had a lot work. to do. He was on appropriations. But, yeah. he, you know, Raleigh was an old banker, and, and the, what he... Why he brought it up the way he did was was easy to justify. I mean, Raleigh, Raleigh's point was you don't look at the books every two years. And, of course, you could make the argument about legislative uh, counsel when, when everything's said and done. But his point was very uh, legislative branch. And, uh, you know, that's always kind of been your take. I agree with you. You're not going to get as many uh, uh, young people to run if you turn it into what is pretty much a more of a full-time job. And if you, uh, you know, this isn't a career builder for most people. It's a public service. And if you have to, you better have an awful friendly boss if you're going to take off every year. Yeah. That says, okay, just I don't need your services for three months. I'll see you when you're back. And that's not going to happen to a lot of people. I want to I ask you, though, about, because you talk about nobody's doing it to, to get rich. And I've never felt that anybody looked at uh, the money that you make from the legislature as though you didn't earn every cent of it. So I want to preface this by that. But I do think there's a lot of people in the legislature that are there at uh, retirement ages because they want that health insurance. Well, I there's no believe. question that... So that let it, me ask you the question, though. Why should they get it? You know, uh, th I would have always proportioned it out, but I was never in the majority there. Try to take a benefit away from anybody, a taxpayer or a legislator, and it's pretty difficult. You know, for example, I'll give you the, a retired person over 65 can automatically go on Medicare. Mm -hmm. But instead, we pay a full policy for all those people that are eligible, whereas we should be paying for their supplement. You know, there's, a, there's money to be saved there, but they, they don't want to break the mold. They don't seem to want to do it. I would have been on the side of saying, you know, participation. We tried one year to get $250 participation, and it didn't get anywhere in the legislature. Because they said, no, no, we don't get paid enough. Well, I said, we'll offset your pay then. Cheaper bargain than, than all the cost what, of the medical insurance. <laughs> it, it, never, it, it died a sudden you, death. And you still got elected leader? Yeah, I still got elected leader. Well, I was just always thinking a little bit outside of the box. I, I, it I wasn't will, a progressive thought, but it was a thought. I will tell you this. If, it's my belief that if, if I went around and asked for 15,000 signatures... Uh, on an initiated measure. I'm not talking about putting it into the North Dakota Constitution. I'm talking about just an initiated measure that says legislators will no longer receive uh, full-time health care benefits. I'd get those 15,000 signatures like that, and I'll tell you something else. It would pass. You know, it, it just you got to relate this back to Obamacare. <laughs> if you like your policy, you can keep your policy. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. and see how well that worked what, out. What, what yep. they found out about whether or not they liked their policy was their policies that went away were policies that didn't do crap. And you and I ended up paying the bill for them after they were in the hospital. And but that's a whole other issue. Yeah, that's a different... By the way, whatever happened to Trump's health care plan? I, I looked all over for it today. Is it? Do you have a copy? Is that a copy of it? Because I have never seen, remember Donald Trump, uh, you know, in the first six months, we're going to completely undo uh, the Affordable Care Act and we'll give you it. I never did see that. They, un they, unro they unrolled it. Not enough. They enrolled a couple of the mandates in they, there and that was it. They didn't do deadly. Can we just admit that? It's, it's they didn't do enough. It's they easier to beat enough. up on. I still am from a free market guy on health insurance, and, uh, you know, that's the difference. I don't want government-run health care. Well, be careful saying that now. Are you on Medicare? Absolutely. Well, it's government-run health care. Yeah, yeah. Right? They, and they call me up and say you're on it. Well, that's good, though. Yeah, and that's I buy good. my supplement, and I buy a good one just What, in what case. if we took Medicare down to 50? Because it's, it's people 50 and older that are costing the money. Yeah. Then the younger people could uh, go ahead and afford health insurance because the amortization would be such that the risk is next to nothing. What if what if you took the great plan that Medicare is 
took it down to 50. Would why, you vote for that? Why, no. Why don't we just pay for everybody's college, too? Well, <laughs> uh-huh. you know, that'd be cheaper the because then they'd all be working when they were done, right? The people that don't think you and I pay for college are wrong. <laughs> we pay for a lot of college. Yep. In, our, in our tax money. Absolutely. We pay for a lot of North it. Dakotans have always been outstanding in their support of higher ed. Yeah. Do we have too many institutions of higher ed? You know, I'd like to see some consolidation. I'm not necessarily that you close them, but that they have their missions more closely defined. I mean, they still talk about the Valley City State Teachers College. You want to go out there and find out how many our teachers are created and how many other positions are created? Mm-hmm. We need to do some organization. There. I've always been a three-tier guy. The trade and techs should have a bigger umbrella than they have. There shouldn't be seven schools teaching nursing at different levels. There should be some coordination on that program. I tried to get that done with a lot of fight because nobody wants to give up their program. Courses aren't always uh, allowed to be transferable. And, and they talk about a nurse shortage all the time. What happens we got seven. There's two schools, private schools that offer it. There's nine places training nurses in North Dakota. Why would we have a shortage? Because they don't pay nurses. Yeah, well, they, they pay them. They, they pay them, but it's a time. I, I have a daughter-in-law who's an RN, and she works in the uh, in a baby ward, and she's um, very highly qualified, competent lady. Mm-hmm. And uh, the hours in the family are the are the thing that are the toughest for them. I mean, it, your life is really not your own because when they schedule you, you're on. So well, it's a tough it's a tough racket, but thank God they care. It's like the CNAs at the uh, at the nursing homes. You know, all right. those people, they, 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 God bless them for the jobs they do, and they don't get paid enough. Well, my wife has worked in long-term care her entire life, yeah. and she's an RN, and, and my daughter's a nurse practitioner. So anybody who thinks that doctors, nurse practitioners, nurses don't work, they don't get it. Well, if, you, if you've seen their schedule, you're saying, I'm glad it's not me. Exactly. So this legislative session, we're going to end up with money in the bank now that you gave it all back to the oil companies, or what are we going to do? <laughs> You just will never get over the fact that I saved the state so much money by <laughs> doing that. You did not save the you know? state money. But you gave it away to Harold Ham. He took it to Oklahoma. I want him spending it here. Well, he spends a lot of it here. Uh, we, we have some real issues with this administration and their policy towards fossil fuels. I and you that- and I both know what what's really I feel bad about is that the absolute war on coal. Yeah. I mean, they have done more in North Dakota than any other state and any other country on creating clean fuel and trying to get CO2 recapture and doing all the things that enhance that for oil wells. We've been selling it to Canada for years, but they just get smacked around and around and around. And someday we're going to, the lights are going to go out. But, but I'm going to tell you this. You know, everybody thinks it's about elections, elections, elections. Here's the thing about coal, right? We were told the last president was going to be the champion for making steel here in the U.S. and for coal. He wasn't able to get that done. I mean, he wasn't. And, and I'm not blaming him. Because I think there's coal enemies out there. They don't understand our power grid. But if he couldn't get it done, coal's in trouble. Yeah. Can you admit that? I think coal has a real target on its back, and I'm not sure it can recover. When we come back, who in the world who in the world would invest in, well, a, in, a coal, in, in coal at you, this point in time? You've already seen it. You've yeah. seen coal plants closed down. But yeah. uh, when we come back, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to talk a little more on the national side of politics. Uh, with a man that um, that served in North Dakota for what, 26? 58 years in well, the uh, 92 years. Yeah. <laughs> 92 years. Al Carlson, right <laughs> after this. Respect, innovation. Trust and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. 
Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. There's nothing more important than family. And at Prairie Rose Family Dentists, we get it. That's why we have more locations, more dentists, specialists, extended hours, pediatric clinics, and even emergency appointments. So you can always be seen. Book your appointment today at prairierosedentist.com. Prairie Rose Family Dentists. We are family. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Pub 21, your one stop for fun, drinks, and food. Our spacious facility provides COVID-safe fun for you and all your friends. With nightly bingo and specials, you can be sure there's something to do for everyone. If you're staying in for the night, we've got you covered just across the way with Pub 21 Liquor. We have a wide variety of options, from wine to whiskey and everything in between. Stop in today at 1014 South 12th Street in Bismarck to see what all the buzz is about. You won't be disappointed. In a little bit, Nick Archuleta is going to join us from ND United as we head down the road, but I hung on to him. Al Carlson, former majority leader in the North Dakota House. Al, we were talking about uh, uh, local politics. Let's talk about national politics. Uh, my suspicion is, and you're an old school teacher, right? I'm an old school janitor. So, I mean, <laughs> we, we both got some experience they, here. They, they did sometimes more teaching than the teachers did. <laughs> Those guys, they, the kids all talked to them and got to know them. And yeah, my, my folks were cook and janitor for years, and that meant the minute the school bus got to matter, you cleaned school. Yeah. yeah that was their way of doing it. But, uh, um, you know, I think we both would, in that school environment, give different grades, uh, but grade the, uh, uh, grade the Biden administration so far. You know, I, I can't give them a, a passing grade so far because every, it, not only on education, but on all these issues, it's been really a, a hard turn to the left. I think farther left than even you would go sometimes when you look at some of his policies. I mean, when he shuts down pipelines, which is still the safest way to move oil, and we're going to move oil, now they're going to be mad when all the rail cars are running again, but Buffett will make money. You know, so... I, I can't give him a passing grade because his war on, uh, on North Dakota and on the environment and on coal really, really puts me in a spot where I can't give him a passing grade. Plus, way too many executive orders. And I didn't like Trump's executive power either because we didn't elect the king. And both of them, in my opinion, have overabused and Congress has allowed them to just pass laws by the stroke of a pen. So way too many executive orders, 120 or some up to this point in time. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot, and I, uh, I just can't give him a good grade. Uh, I still have a prediction that when I watch him and I watch his health, I think that he's a one-year president, and I think Kamala's in charge. A one-year or one term? Well, one year. I don't think he'll oh, be there a year from now. I and, think and, you couldn't be more wrong than that. Yeah. If, if, you gave if he's speech, there, it'll be in, in spirit only. How much, uh, how much, well, we can't gamble on air. <laughs> here's, here's the deal. If you heard him speak, after the passage of that stimulus package, I, you know, th this is a man with a speech impediment. You never even noticed it. He, if if that didn't end the whole uh, senility argument, I don't know what could. I well, mean, when you practice, you and I have given speeches to a lot of people. I'm not sure we could have done that well. Well, when he, uh, when you practice that much, you should get good at it. <laughs> well, He's a, th that is how does, it goes. Though. Why, why do if they? You're struggling mentally, practicing all in the world. You can practice all day long. I've listened to him, his floor speeches from when he was a senator. I've listened to his speeches when he was a vice president, and now all of a sudden he has a stutter. 
He always had a stutter. No, 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 no. That no, no, guy no, was no, a pretty no. good speaker Come on, prior to Al. that. Yep. He's always had a yep. stutter. I won't give you, him a pass on that one. Okay, here's what you said you wouldn't give him a pass on. And you brought up the Keystone XL pipeline. Yeah. I would I would not have pulled the permit on the Keystone XL pipeline. But I think that the listening public thinks of the Keystone XL pipeline, and they think it's going to hurt North Dakota in so much as though we're not going to be able to pump our oil, pump our oil. This is a pipeline of tar sand, not good crude like we have in the Williston Basin. This is the worst of the worst when it comes to oil production from Canada traveling through our country to the Gulf so that it can be shipped out. Well, so not Canada, all of it shipped out. They're refining right, some of it down south. Right, but, okay, let's be honest. Yeah. This, this was never intended for shipping our oil. Now, there's a certain United States senator, she, uh, that pushed to make sure there was some uh, North Dakota crude that went in there, some North Dakota uh, quality oil that went in there. In order to get that permit, she was able to do it. But you know who one of the people she had to fight was? Harold Hamm. He didn't want that pipeline. He didn't want it because he saw that oil as a competitor to North Dakota's oil. And I want to give you a chance to speak to that because I can pull up all the clips you want of Harold Hamm saying he didn't want the Keystone XL pipeline. Well, I think there's a lot more of that uh, of that tar sands oil. They don't want to call it tar sands anymore because that tar sounds bad. So now it's oil sands. Oil. Okay. It, yeah, I mean, I I, here again, it's terrible oil. Yeah. They need, they need to have a thinner crude to make it even flow through those pipelines. Right. My concern is not so much the Keystone, even though that's a, I think a, the permits were issued, it was allowed to expand and to go, and it got cut off. So you plan all these things, you invest the money in these things, and you cut it off. The one I'm concerned about is when they want to expand the volume in the Dakota Access Pipeline. What's, is that one next? And if that's next, that puts our oil on a railroad train again. Right. And, and that, and you that, know we agree with each yep, other. And every, and every state in the country didn't want that oil flowing through their cities. The, another thing that he did that I think was really is his border policy. I mean, when he absolutely opened the borders and flung them wide open, and, and right now, you know, you and I could talk at length about what's happening at the borders, and it's not good. I mean, they mobilized FEMA today to take care of all these un... Uh, attached kids that are coming without parents. Where are the parents? You know, your sister was a champion of, of uh, sex trafficking. This is the pipeline for sex trafficking. It's just terrible what's happening at that open border. And to reverse those things that quickly and to say, welcome, come on in, whoever it is, uh, it's going to cause a lot of problems. And I think it's, I think in, within the next two weeks, you and I can talk about this and we'll find out all the drastic measures they had to take to try and put a halt to this or at least get it under control. Well, it, it, there's no, no question whatsoever. It's, it's a lose-lose for Joe Biden, okay? It always was going to be a lose-lose for Joe Biden. Either he was going to have to take as harsh of a stance as Donald Trump did, which many, myself included, don't believe needed to happen, or he had to completely open it up, which he's not doing. So it's, it's a lose-lose for Joe Biden. I understand that. It's a tough issue. Well, do you let those kids come in and then say, all right, where's your mom and dad? We'll, well go find them and bring them in? But here, what do you do? Here's, here's the way to solve a lot of immigration problems. You're not going to like it, but here's the way to stop it. Every person that you catch hiring, knowing illegal immigrants in this country gets thrown in jail for a year. Well, I don't know if you need to throw them in jail for a year, but what they're doing is illegal as well. I don't disagree with no, that. No, no, throw them in jail yeah. for a year. You I'll know? tell you what, that, that start naming professions. I don't care. We can, be, we can be stereotypical. We can talk about those people out taking care of the orchards or, or you know, picking fruit, picking, you know, I, I don't care. But we there's can talk lots about people cleaning hotel rooms. We could talk about people who work in the potato industry or in the dairy industry. Remember that when they got caught uh, over in Oaks with a whole bunch of uh, illegal immigrants? Yeah. Yeah, that was there. And so I watched them close a restaurant down in Fargo that the whole back room was full of them. Exactly. Yeah. And so it, it's here. It's here. And so if, if you want, word gets everywhere that, hey, you got good jobs, you can make more money. Good jobs make more money. Right. And, the, and you know what they are? They're good workers. Oh, yeah. The ones that are working. So are good. why are we fighting it? <laughs> well, well, we're fighting it. But the point is, there's no, 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 no. There's Let's all get kind, back to that. You know, there's why all, are we fighting we it? We need the workers. Because there are many legal ways for those workers to come here without crawling across a river or climbing over a wall. Obviously, obviously too slow of a process. Well, because it, that's because what they always say. But that it's 12 million people 
that are in this country illegally. I'm that trying we have to figure and find country. my notes, but I believe there's been a hundred thousand people that have come in since Biden took president. I hundred thousand illegals that have crossed the border. Well, I don't know how they'd know that, but number two, I I don't doubt it. Well, when if, ICE, if your question is, do I doubt when that? When ICE and the border patrol are told to stop and just look the other way, so there's something wrong. You said the figure is twelve thousand, right? Well, there was a hundred thousand supposedly that have okay, come in. Okay, a hundred thousand. Yeah. Where are they? Now, I'm not saying they're not here. My point is, do you think that they're all dealing drugs? No, no. Do you think they're all involved with prostitution? No. How are they surviving? I'll tell you how they're surviving. How are they you surviving? You and I both know how they're surviving. How are they surviving? They're working. They're in that subculture of workers in this country that can get treated a certain way because they're off the grid. And so it's like this. It's like, all right. You think they're cash only? <laughs> you think? <laughs> you you were involved in the construction business yeah, but for I, years. Yeah, but the, mean, the point is there's many legal ways to get here and to just throw the gates open and say, Hondurans, come on in and don't bring your parents because we'll come get them Do you later. think they'd live here if they couldn't have a job and ship some money home? Uh, well, Do you think? Well, who knows how they're doing that? But you, I, can, would, I just told you, you how they're would, doing would that. Would you admit that there's probably a real chance for a drug activity, I cartel think activity, anyway. and, I, and 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 uh, sexual sex trafficking. I think that's always been there anyway. And you don't I, think it has increased because think, of this open philosophy? I think it, with anything like that, you get to the source of it. You get to the source. And that's closing the border I mean, down. The source did. is closing the border down. No, no, the source is what the people need in cheap labor. Yeah. They want in cheap labor. Well, we have an unemployment rate around this country that's 6 7 8%, which is better than it was, but it's too high. But those people don't want to work in those jobs. Our people don't want to work in them. They'd rather go to the line. And here's another problem. When you have someone who's getting unemployment benefits and you give him another $300 or $400 a week on top of it, and he's taking home more pay than when he's working, why would he go to work? Well, I, I would, why would he go to work? I would take it a step further. You watch when uh, minimum wage goes up, and it will go up. You watch when it goes up, how many more... Uh, it, you know, illegal immigrants come across that border. And you know why? Because of the cheap labor. And that's why. And the uh, minimum wage has never worked. It never will work because the businesses will do it on their own. They you don't go around do it and on their own. you can go flip burgers at Burger King for 14 bucks you want an the hour. the numbers on how many people are getting paid minimum wage and full time jobs. Yeah. And then, and then people don't want them to get SNAP and they don't want to get them Medicaid and they don't want to get them any of these things because. You know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. First, we tell them you got to have the baby. Next thing you tell them, we're not going to feed it. And how about if we have a plan that says you have another baby out of what? Like, we'll give you another more money. Well, that you, program's out there too. So let's just. You talk think they're not going to get pregnant? Bo no, no. Do both you sides believe the they're not going to get pregnant? Or do you think it's an incentive to have more kids? No. Oh. I, I don't. I think it's. I think it's the, what happens when people. Mess around. Oh, That's I, what I think Well, happened. you know, then right. they can abort them all and we won't have to worry about them. That's what they're doing out there. Well, I sad. tell you what, it, and, and I think I'm just as pro-life as you are, but I will tell you this. Once they're here amongst us, I'll support them. But they've got to come legally. All right, we could do this all day, as you can tell. <laughs> Nick Archuleta is going to join one. us. I'm glad we got into that. Nick Archuleta is going to join us from ND United right after this. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Beck Communications is now hiring independent sales agents around the state. We're looking for highly motivated individuals to take advantage of this opportunity, selling advertising for our news and sports programming on Beck TV and sponsorships for the Bismarck Bucks indoor football team. Independent sales agents will make 50% commission on their completed sales for all products. Beck TV is the leader in broadcasting local sports, owner of the Bismarck Bucks indoor football team, and originator of newly launched news opinion programming. Submit your application now at careers at becktel.coop. This is an exciting opportunity you can't pass up. 50% commission for independent sales agents now hiring at Beck Communications. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. 
We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream sheets. When you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Ever been in a cave before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? Oh. See you at the car! But how will we... The car! Your offer has been accepted. Ever bought a house before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the closing. But how will we... The closing! The experienced professionals at Superior Glass provide residential and commercial glass installation and repair services in Central and Western North Dakota. Superior Glass is your source for stained glass projects, mirrors, windows, touchless, and automated entry solutions. Stop by and see us at 3323 East Broadway in Bismarck or call us at 701-258-5600. Superior Glass, where you get superior service for less. Bye for now. Thanks for going down the road with us some more. Uh, the gentleman we're about to talk to now is, uh, well, he's one of those individuals where if you're sitting around and saying, okay, what's, what's one of the most important functions that government can do? What is it? Well, it's teaching, right? It's educating the next generation. And that's one thing that it, it really crosses the lines usually, right? It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, doesn't matter if you're a Republican. You want your kids to do well in school. And to do well in school, you need good teachers. Uh, well, one of the individuals I think of when I think of teachers is the man that represents them. That's Nick Archuleta with ND United. Nick, good to have you coming down the road with us. Hey, it's good to be back, Joel. I want to get an update of where we're at this legislative session because for some reason, and this I may be too broad of a brush here, but for some reason, it seems like teachers have been right in people's targets this session. Uh, and I'm going to say it. It's from the majority party. I don't expect you to get partisan here, but the Republicans seem to have a thing out for public schools. And, and I want to talk to you about that. I want to talk to you about a couple of things. For example, K-12 funding bill. Um, when you start funding private schools with state money, that's a long and, and slippery and dark slope to go down, Nick. It really is. It really is, Joel. And, and uh, our state has a long history. In fact, if you go back and take a look in our uh, Constitution uh, for the state of North Dakota, uh, there's a prohibition in there about using public monies for uh, private schools, private education. That responsibility was given uh, explicitly to the state. So um, our tradition is such that we don't uh, do that. And, and there is more and more of a call for state monies to be going to private uh, institutions of learning. I don't get it. I don't get it. I know it's self-serving. I know that a lot of legislators there are homeschoolers, uh, you know, and, and a lot of legislators there send kids to their, their uh, you know, private institutions that they so choose. But usually there was always a base there of Leighton Freeberg types that were like, oh, go ahead and do that if you want. But public school is something we make available to you. And so is that changing? Is that I mean, where are we going to be at the end of the session when it comes to public school funding? Well, I'm, I'm hoping where we'll be is uh, the state ma making a commitment to, to fund uh, public schools adequately. Uh, right now, as you know, uh, there are something like $300 million will be coming to K-12 education uh, through the uh, legislation that was just passed and signed last week. Um, and as a result of that, uh, I think the legislature is saying, well, you know what, let's use that ESSER money, is what it's called, uh, to pay for those things that we would normally fund. Um, so uh, coming out of the House, the, the uh, uh, <clears throat> bill that uh, serves as uh, the um, vehicle for the budget for DPI 1388 uh, is, uh, came out of the House with uh, frozen uh, per-pupil spending. 
uh, I'm asking that they uh, increase that by 2% each year at the next biennium uh, and dedicate 70% of that new money to teacher salaries uh, so that we are able to afford, the districts are able to afford to give at least a modest uh, salary increase to teachers. So just so we're crystal clear on that, the average teacher's pay, uh, startup teacher now, they come out of college, they got a mountain of debt, uh, they go out to pick a small town. I don't care. They, let's say Manador had a high school so that other towns don't think I'm picking on, on them. So they go out to a, a Manador high school and they, and they begin teaching eighth grade. How much are you going to get paid? Oh, probably in the mid-30s, low-30s coming out of college. Um, uh, the, uh, what we're seeing, though, is that um, more people will delay their entry into the profession because there are some areas that, are, that they don't really care to go to. Uh, unfortunately, because small towns, I frankly, are, are just dynamite. They have great schools. And, uh, and but I think uh, Dr. <clears throat> Larry Scogan put out a white paper a few years ago that said that we graduate plenty of people to fill every opening in North Dakota. So they're just not willing to go to some of the areas where these openings occur. So um, as a result, uh, we have uh, teacher shortages, if you will. Uh, but I think of it more as a recruitment and retention issue. Well, and I would throw it at you, and I know you'd agree with me on this, is what you just described was 16 bucks an hour. And we're having a debate on a national scale of whether or not we should raise minimum wage to $15 an hour. So you come out with a four-year college degree from Valley City State, and you got a whole bunch of college debt, and you're told to go out to some place you've never lived before uh, and geographically isn't anywhere close to your family, and then go about making uh, 16 bucks an hour, I can't blame them one bit. Uh, until we can learn to pay and incentivize them to go there, it's not going to happen. I want to talk about the transgender bill, uh, the vicious, vicious piece of legislation uh, that young uh, Koppelman put in, Ben Koppelman, and it's making its way through. It's part of the whole debate. We've had in studio with me here, uh, Nick, we've had Charlie Johnson, uh, Charlie's with the Convention and Visitors Bureau here in the town I'm sitting in, in Fargo, and he's pointed out time and time again how much money will be lost to the state from some of the organizations he's able to bring in uh, and how they're going to look at a policy like this and say, no, we're not going to hold our national tournament there. Uh, we're, we're just not. We don't want to be associated with that. That doesn't seem to matter. Uh, you saw the same thing happen in South Dakota. Governor Ohm couldn't rush quick enough to go ahead and sign it. And so where are we at in the North Dakota process with the transgender bill? Well, the transgender bill uh, the it affects students participating in, in high school athletics. And as, as you mentioned, too, and what Mr. Johnson had brought up as well, you, uh, any sort of uh, political subdivision or the state cannot even allow their buildings or their fields to be used if there is a transgender athlete that will be participating. Um, that's incredibly harmful. I look at it uh, the same way that the conservative governor of, of Utah looks at it. Uh, governor Cox, he refused to sign that bill uh, because he said uh, something, and this is a, to paraphrase him, he says, until you've spent time with transgender youth, uh, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, they change you. Um, these are young uh, men and young women who are trying to find their place in society, in their communities, in their schools. And so to pass legislation like this, in my view, is just it's codifying bigotry. And we should never, as a state, be in the business of doing that. Um, and and this, this was one of those bills that came out of a bill mill. I don't know if it was a uh, Heritage Foundation or, or any a number of them that put these out. But it's no coincidence that you're seeing these in 20-some different state capitals uh, this session. All in conservative states, I might add. And the very governor that you just made reference to had another quote in that article that I read, which is, we're just trying to keep these kids alive. Right. Uh, they have the highest rate of suicide of any group out there. Uh, the, these are young people that just want an education. And I would argue this. Where's the problem? I mean, th th this is some solution that the Koppelmans of the world have in their mind. And this, by the way, is an, a, a young man serving in the legislature that never competed in an athletic event. I, I looked it up in West Fargo, never put on a uniform, and yet he's going to define competition in athletics. Uh, Nick, one more thing in terms of where we're at when it comes to grant dollars. Uh, how are we going to sit in, in North Dakota when it comes to those challenge grants? Well, those challenge grants, uh, in fact, I testified on that uh, this morning. Um, 
the challenge grants exist to help leverage money so that uh, the state puts up a dollar for every two dollars that the, an institution's uh, foundation raises. And these go to scholarships and research grants and things on that order. Um, we are in favor of challenge grants, but there were two amendments that were attached to it on the floor of the Senate uh, before it came over to the House. And one of those included the uh, two uh, private universities in North Dakota, the University of Jamestown and the University of Mary, fine schools. But again, uh, we have always opposed spending public dollars on private institutions. And the second one was put in by uh, Senator uh, Yanni Miro up in uh, uh, the north, the eastern part of our state. And she attached uh, some language that uh, uh, would prohibit any of the universities from working with Planned Parenthood, although Planned Parenthood wasn't named, but it was, uh, it was a clear implication. And in fact, she mentioned Planned Parenthood this morning in her um, testimony. So um, we're against that too. Uh, frankly, if you wanna have an abortion bill, put one on the floor, argue it on its merits. It uh, doesn't belong in here. It, it uh, politicizes, politicizes something that frankly is uh, very, very popular and very, very necessary for our college and university campuses. Nick, we'll have you back on talk about money, talk about PERS, okay? Appreciate yeah, you coming down the road with us. Yep. Thank you for having me. Nick Archuleta, ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, people who won't take the vaccine, what are they doing on behalf of their country? We'll talk about it as we head down the road. It's a Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. So we're talking about 2 million shots a day. We're talking about three different drugs that have been approved now to be uh, used for vaccination when it comes to COVID-19. 2 million shots in the arm, and it's getting to be even more. In North Dakota here, we've had a good run. 
We have. Many of you know someone who has been vaccinated that doesn't fit into one of the groups that you would think that they would be in. Maybe a little bit younger, right? Heck, many of you that are watching have been vaccinated, and you th you think, well, okay, it wasn't my turn. Well, you know what? It was your turn. We're doing a good job in North Dakota, and I want to compliment Governor Burgum and the health department on that because I think that what their focus has been has been about getting shots in the arm. Now, the process of, hey, do I sign up? Do I do all of this? You know, we can argue whether or not that's been informative enough. Uh, but what we what we really can't argue is our rate of people being vaccinated. It's good. It's strong. And I think that North Dakota, between all the folks like myself that contracted COVID uh, and those individuals who have been vaccinated, I think we're going to be sitting in a much better place than a lot of other states. That being said, there's a large number of people out there that won't get vaccinated. Why? Why? It's their own personal choice. It's their own life. Uh, they get to make that determination. But a certain number needs to be gotten to to get that herd immunity that we've been talking about, right? So some of you are too young to remember this, but I still got the scar on my arm where the smallpox vaccine was given. Um, got a polio shot. Uh, got the mump shot. Got all of those things that when you walked into kindergarten or first grade, they said, all right, give me your vaccine vaccination card. And, you know, here here it was. All right, good. Come on into school. You're not going to get everybody else sick kind of a thing. I don't know why we're in a position where everyone who doesn't take it should necessarily be treated absolutely the same. It has to be incentivized. In other words, uh, you want to go to a Twins game and sit around 30,000 people? Show me your card. Show me your vaccination card. And then you go in there, and now we're not worried about this, that, or the other thing. If we can prove to America that the 38,000 people at Target Field have been vaccinated, what's the problem with having them in there? Elbow to elbow, right? There are 38,000 people that have been vaccinated that want to go to a professional baseball game that day. But if you have people that don't want to get vaccinated, should they be allowed to get into that stadium? It's a fair question. It's a real fair question. The other thing I would throw at you is all of us are concerned about small businesses. You can open up the whole economy. You could do what Texas did and said, go for it. Florida has always done. South Dakota has always done. Go for it. Do whatever you want. You can do all of that. But you know what? You're not going to get them to come out. Not the way you have before. Sure, there might be a beach in Florida of spring breakers. You're not going to have a hard time filling that up. But try to get some people to go to a restaurant when they don't believe it's safe yet to go to because of COVID. They're not going to. They're not. I couldn't get my wife to come out and, you know, after she has been vaccinated now, she, it, well, she worked from home. And so after she's been vaccinated now, and that time has passed, that 30 days after the, the vaccination, now she's ready to go out. She's ready to go out and maybe go out for supper or something like that. That's my point. There's a lot of people like Sue. There is. And so how do we get to that number quicker? You get the shot in the arm. There, there is no evidence whatsoever that that shot in the arm is going to be lethal and not to mention the fact, worse in any way, shape, or form, than what COVID is. I know a lot of people that have had COVID that have long-lasting problems, and they're going to have those problems for the rest of their life. I can vouch for you when I tell you it damages lungs, okay? It's, it's like I've got something here, and I can't hack it up. It's, that's what I'm dealing with. Now, what others are dealing with is far more severe. But the fact of the matter is, it is way worse than any shot or that one day you may get sick from the shot. I've had it. I didn't get sick. I didn't. Now, I was recommended to me that the, the day after the second shot, maybe I should plan on taking some time off, that I might be tired, that I might not feel as good or not be on my A game. So? So? I had a coworker uh, that had her second shot. And she called me that night and she said, this thing really 
knocked me on my butt. And then the next morning she comes into work and said, how are you doing? She goes, fine, great. Went away just like that. But it, for a while I felt like, well, like crap, right? Small price to pay. And also, I would argue that it's patriotic to get your shot. I would. That small business owner, that, that person whose shop we're trying to open, I, I think it's patriotic to recognize and understand that as a country, we're going to get this phase behind us as long as we get our shot. I had a guy call into my radio show today. And he said, I don't believe in the shot. You know, they, this is all a joke, this COVID thing. I said, okay. Uh, and he started talking about Donald Trump and how Donald Trump had this right all along. And I said to him, I go, okay, did you know that Donald Trump got the shot? And he just did so behind the curtain. I mean, that's a man that if he came out today could help this country more than he ever could as president just by telling people to go get their shot. He won't do it. He won't do it because he knows who his base is. That 32% is against anything the government might say is a good for them. And this vaccine, ladies and gentlemen, is good for them. And it's good for you. We'll have some closing comments when we come back right here as we go down the road. There's nothing more important than family. And at Prairie Rose Family Dentists, we get it. That's why we have more locations, more dentists, specialists, extended hours, pediatric clinics, and even emergency appointments, so you can always be seen. Book your appointment today at prairierosedentists.com. Prairie Rose Family Dentists. We are family. Deciding how to promote your business can be hard. Visit the professionals at Dakota Promotions and Printing and let them help you through your struggle. Dakota Promotions provides promotional items and apparel from corporate gifts to team shirts and everything in between. With quick turnaround times and friendly service, they are your best choice. And best yet, you're shopping local. Visit them online at dakotapromo.com or stop in their showroom at 320 West Main in Mandan. Dakota Promotions, delivering promotions just for you. Hi, I'm Dennis Hogan along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment. You know, the one thing that we'll really take a good enough look at here as we go down the road is the state of ranchers. Uh, where are that? We talk about the farm economy, uh, you know, and people always assume those two things go together. Uh, small grains, beef, those type of things. They don't. Uh, many times the, the person that's raising beef out there, 
uh, they're just using corn as a feeder. They they don't sit there and expect to get X number of yield or, or not because they're not selling that corn on the open market the same way they're using it for silage. So, you know, when we sit here and think about farmers right now and we think about what this latest stimulus bill has done, you know, there's going to be some people smiling. I get that. Commodity prices are, are good. We're sitting here looking at uh, where we're at in, in relation to ag production and what our numbers are. That's good. Uh, that's good for all of us, I might add. But what about ranchers? What about their scenario? When could they control their future? I'm not sure they can. I'm really not. We're going to touch on that tomorrow uh, when we head down the road. One other thing I just wanted to mention to you is it's a big week in North Dakota. Uh, that's right. The University of North Dakota is now in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. And that's a conference that uh, North Dakota State University has been in for quite a while. And that's eight out of the last nine national championships that came back to the state of North Dakota through NDSU. In other words, NDSU has been doing just fine. Just fine. Uh, now, UND plays them this weekend as a conference full. They've been playing some football, but I don't think that UND has been to the point where you could say they can compete on an equal level. I don't know who's going to win this game. I have no idea who's going to win this game. As an old college referee, um, I can tell you there's a reason you play them, right? But this one's going to be closer, I think. This one at least, this one at least will hold people's uh, attention. Where it wasn't but a couple of years ago uh, when the Bison played the Fighting Hawks that you looked at that game and said, well, that's an easy one for the Bison. I don't think that's going to be true anymore. I think Bubba Schwaggered up at the University of North Dakota has built a pretty good football program. And we're going to find out. That's the one thing about it. On Saturday, we're going to find out. And that's the great thing about sports because one of them has to win and one of them has to lose. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Until then, good riding with you, folks.